Hey everybody, first show of 2020 after taking a few weeks off and I blame Obama. Hey, it worked for others. Riding the subway in New York may cost double for some people. Apple claims their services revenue was way up for 2019 and January alone accounted for 362 million, a new single day record. So what are all these services that we're spending money on and are they worth it? Lastly, Dave Ginsburg returns triumphant from CES and is going to talk about some of the cool things that he saw while he was out there. That is all we're going to talk about tonight on the Mac to the Future Go live cast. Yeah, what else do you want, huh? And we are live right here on the Mac to the Future live cast. And I, yeah, I, what is going on? Why can't I get rid of this thing? Every single time I pick my camera, it comes up again. That is so weird. It must be some something that I'm doing wrong. Shocker. That is a shocker. And of course, it would not be the Mac to the Future live cast, or at least it would be a different kind of Mac to the Future live cast if I didn't have uh, my two cohorts. First one being Warren Sklar. Hello, Mr. Sklar. Hey, before we get too far, are you broadcasting on your page or just the Mac to the Future page? Because I don't. See uh, well, page. right now it's like the Mac to the Future page. I thought that uh, I was going to be able to also push that over to my page, but I'm not seeing a share button. You're not on your page. You're on the Mac to the Future page. Yes, which is cool. Okay. So, how did you like CES? What I love. What? Uh, <laughs> um, no, I am. Uh, I am very jealous. I um, for the first time, I put the idea into my wife's head. Like while she was sleeping, I'm like, I want to go to CES one year, and um, we'll see how that goes. Um, Did she wake like, up when you said that? <laughs> no, I'm just going to do that every uh, every couple of days and see what oh, happens okay. uh, next year. Good, yeah, good plan. Yeah. Good plan. Uh, how was how was your Christmas and holidays? Yeah, good. It's been a couple Busy. weeks uh, since we all got together. Yeah, yeah. I can't remember the last time, but it was uh, it's good. It was last decade. It was last. Wow, Jesus! <laughs> I know. Time flies, man. Um, no, it was good. Uh, and hey, I I got I got an email from God. Actually, I got a. Uh, Christmas card from Guy, and I like to thank you for that. Because oh, you're welcome. Did. But uh, my wife's like, "Who's Guy?" I'm like, "Some guy." Yeah, <laughs> sure. you really want to know? I'll tell you if you really want to know. <laughs> and she was like, "No, I really don't want to know." I'm like, "It's some guy from the internet." And then she yeah. opened up the card, and you had and you had all the, the 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 thank yous from like the whole family, including the animals. And she's like. Yeah, this is for you. I'm like, okay, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Yeah. All right. So next up, Mr. Dave Ginsburg. Uh, can you lower uh, your camera just a little bit? Oh, what happened there? There we go. Cool. How you doing today, Dave? I know you're probably a little is that, sleepy. Is that better? Yeah. Sorry, Sorry guys. Oh, too much. Yeah, it, it's almost like we know what we're doing. Almost. Yeah, we do. I yeah. am doing great, thank you. <laughs> and uh, yes, I and I too got your Christmas card. Thank you. I, I appreciate You're welcome. that. That uh, it was uh, it was interesting. And uh, I too uh, uh, had to whisper in my wife's ear, say, uh, "I want to go to CDS," but you know, I just did it anyway because I went. Yeah. And uh, yes, uh, and uh, I'm um, <clears throat> a little 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 lagged. It was long, but we'll get into that. Uh, it. Uh, it was, a, it was a long week, but uh, rewarding. Enjoyed it. A lot of a lot of great things. Um, I saw a lot of great things, and uh, you know, we're gonna get into get into it though. I'm I'm doing well. Yes, and we're back in we're in a new decade. I can't believe it. We are. I can't believe it. Um, we had 
our our Christmas dinner was was fabulous. We had a, a prime rib that uh, what that just came out perfect. And then New Year's, Tracy and I joined some some friends in um, Berkeley Springs, West Virginia, which they have springs, oddly enough, and they have this this New Year's Eve party with a live band and. It's it's actually a really nice deal. It's at the Country Inn, I think it is, and for like two hundred and fifty dollars, you you get a room for the night, you get the the New Year's band, and you get a prime rib uh, buffet dinner. So it was like, psh, it was fan fan tabuloso. It was really really good. So yum, can't wait to do it again nice. maybe. Yep. And I danced, nice. and I had to be, yeah. I have to be really careful when I dance, especially on a crowded dance floor. Because now you two have met me, you know that I'm a large individual, so I can't just go on a dance floor and start swinging my arms and legs around, or someone's going to get really, really hurt. So I, I just kind of like, oh, here we go, I'm, I'm dancing. Yeah, oh, oh, look at me dance. The the three of us are not small. I, no, I'm large, but I'm pretty, I'm pretty large too. So yeah, so of yeah. course I don't dance just for for uh, logistics for the most part. But um, yeah, no, we had prime rib too. My wife, uh, my wife's family came for nice. Christmas, like they do all the time. Well, no, but um, yeah. And we had the Christmas with a lot of kids and then New Year's was basically, yeah, we had the neighbors over. And I stayed up from 1201 and went to sleep. <laughs> okay. All right. It's, it's the new decade. I'm going to sleep now. No, I actually yeah. uh, s- somehow managed to stay up until like uh, almost two o'clock. I was I was really surprised. Now, you know, and two o'clock in the morning when you're in your twenties is like psh, the night's just getting started, man. You know, you get into your fifties, and in my case, almost into my sixties, and it's like it's it, it's two o'clock. I should have been in bed four hours ago, or or longer. Five. Why am I still awake? <laughs> and um, uh. and this is. This is the first show of the new decade, and uh, everyone who is watching or will watch, I appreciate the fact that you're here. Uh, we've got so much stuff to talk about that we should probably just get right into it. Some of the quick takes. TiVo app to stream recorded content to other boxes in limbo as their priorities sh- kind of shift to their own streaming service. Now, uh, I don't know if you guys listen to Tech Fan Tim Robertson's podcast. He and David were talking about TiVo a couple of weeks ago, and basically they were both like, "Who who even uses TiVo anymore? Do you guys know anyone who uses TiVo?" I do. Dave Hamilton does. He does. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, I don't know. I I haven't. You know, I've never subscribed to their service, I so I am I am I probably. Well, was it any good, or did you just move on to something oh, that was better? I loved it. It just, well, TiVo it just was, got... Go ahead. T, well, TiVo was probably one of the first DVR options out there. I think it was the first DVR option, um, if I remember right. That was and, legal. Um, well, I mean, that didn't involve, you know, a computer. Um, you know, back in the day, that day, the cable services didn't have DVRs. It was right. TiVo. Had you know, remember they had the, the hard drives in there. You were able to, some people were able to take the hard drives out and put bigger ones in there. It was kind of like a hobbyist kind of thing, but I, you know, but it, it was the alternative, it was a techie alternative to a VCR at that point, right? Um, so then they kind of evolved around that, and I think they do more, you know, now that streaming and DVR is, you know. A thing i think they evolve but right now cable boxes and smart tvs pretty much could do anything that i think the TV that tiva was anything. able to do and i think that originally they know about they were going to create an app that allowed them to stream recorded content that you would put on it to other people's uh streaming boxes like the apple tv and um right uh, Roku, and apparently those plans are put on hold so that they can develop their own streaming service, which is probably the only possible way at this point that they can survive. I I can't see 
TiVo existing as a separate service whose only function is to record uh, record video because people are either, you know, they're plugged into uh, all of the different services that are out there and just watching whatever it is they want to watch when they want to watch it. And the, the need to own content is becoming less and less. Right. Um, well, a couple things. TiVo just got sold. So TiVo is, un, is, is under a new company uh, now. Mm-hmm. So it's spun off. So they're having some challenges with that, I, I, I know. Um, they uh, Comcast, Xfinity, obviously one of the biggest cable ca- uh, companies out there in the country, um, has uh, uh, has their X1 technology. I switched to it because uh, I was on TiVo. I, I actually love TiVo. I thought TiVo was a great interface. It's just they stopped evolving, they, and, and it started getting too expensive. They, you know, they're making you spend a lot of money to buy a lifetime on their boxes or paying a monthly service for it. Um, and then they also at one point had owned the patent uh, for um, the the abilities of being able to set uh, from your mobile device to set to record uh, your shows from an app because uh, Comcast had to stop stop allowing that for a period of time. Uh, you think, and that was, you think that's why they bought them? Was for well, some of their Com- intellectual property? Comcast did not buy them. No, they, another. I don't know the name of the company that bought them. Oh, okay, now. I misunderstood. Uh, I thought you were saying that. Comcast no, I said they got them. they got bought out, but but uh, Comcast had a there was a lawsuit and TiVo had won, say, stating that that you know Com- Comcast you cannot use this this particular uh, technology that tells it to record um, shows from your mobile device. So it it, st- it was it was horrible. In fact, you want to go to your iPhone and being able to. Uh, uh, and being able to set to record something, that's the whole point of, you know, having a mobile uh, streaming right. service. So Comcast has since gone around it. They've, 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 they've uh, restored that capability. But meanwhile, you know, TiVo is starting to flounder. They're not doing so well. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see where it goes. I, but but I, I, I think TiVo was a nice interface, and, it's, and, it, and it still is to this day. It's just I just think the way it went, the way it went, they went it went well, about it, it was. It, if they can't, if they can't evolve away from from being a service that records show for for other people, then they're right. probably doomed. To coin a phrase. Yeah. Well, I mean they 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 made money selling their hardware, so. Just right. giving well, their software now. out is, is going to be a problem. I mean, but they're not. I mean, you know, Plex is another one. Um, Plex, right. yeah, Plex is huge. I think does, yeah, they're huge and they do okay, and it's similar. But even they um, last month started stream a streaming service of their own. As of right now, like if you have the Plex app, you could. They have a bunch of movies and shows on there that that are that aren't things that you have uh, put on there. Um, I think they're free now um, mm-hmm. with ad supported. Um, but, you know, I, I think uh, basically anybody that has the ability to take something and put it on a screen is looking into some kind of streaming or content service to get money from other people. And, you know, I'm sure TiVo will do the same thing if, if they want to. I, I don't think they're creating their own content. I think they'll just, um, you know, sell their, they'll say their boxes could play streaming content from other whatever. sources. Other places. Okay. Yeah. Uh, next up, Western Digital, I don't know if you saw this out at CES, has announced an eight terabyte SSD that you can fit into your pocket eight terabytes yep i think we can safely say that the spindle hard drives are dead or dying very very quickly yeah i i did see it at cs uh uh western digital also sandisk has uh one that's uh, yeah that's out there well i just i i can't see anybody at this point going well we've got this great Spindle hard drive that everybody's going to want is like, yeah, no. <laughs> well, I think the enterprise is still going to be the market that that's still going to be probably yeah. using those drives yeah. for where it's for a just while. mass more storage, reli- the, the mass storage reliability. Yeah, you know, server farms, yeah. uh, the cloud cloud computing. I mean, you're probably still going to see it. Solid state's there. It's just, yeah, I think mechanical drives are still in that market. 
from that uh, uh, NAS systems I got them. But you know, eight terabytes. Uh, we have up to two right now. I mean, go out to Best Buy and get a two gig uh, right. portable SSD. Yeah, so, or a two terabyte it. SSD. Right. And whatever. Yeah, yeah I mean, and that? one terabyte SSDs are now like uh, in the hundred dollar range or less. So yeah, it's not like. More yeah. Like the day, one Dave and I have, where I, I have the five hundred. You have a one gig. I have the one terabyte. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she, he, he has a one terabyte, I have a 500. They're around 80, 80 bucks for 500 gig and uh, 500 gig. And yeah. he's it's probably about 120, 130 or something like that. Well, um, when I, when but, I went down to Florida to set up that Mac Mini for my brother, um, I ordered for him through Amazon a one terabyte SSD. I think it was like $130, $140 on sale. And it was, it was in the, yeah. you know, because it was going into a Mac mini, it had to be in the two and a half inch form factor. It couldn't be like a blade and yeah. it, you know, it, it worked great. This was a 2012 Mac mini and it went from a, a 250 gig spindle drive to a one terabyte SSD and the sucker flew. Yeah, we get, I mean, as a tech and, and in the Mac to the Future group, people ask all the time how to make their Macs faster. That's and like the number do, one way to do it. That is the number one way to do it. Yeah. If you have if you have a, any computer, Windows, Mac, whatever, um, and it's running off a, uh, off, a, off a mechanical drive or even, sadly, a hybrid drive. Uh, yeah, like, like this iMac that I have, Fusion yeah. Drive. The, the best way to go get faster is going to be the SSD. It's been yeah. like that for a couple of years. So. Okay. I don't, getting on. I, have, I, don't have, I don't have any mechanical drives in anything I know about. So, well, I've, I've um, got I'm, a, I've got a four bay. Basically it's just the J bod J bod box. And I've also got a, an older Drobo four bay Drobo that I use for time machine. And then the um, the JBOD is basically just there so that after I get done creating a video, like the show that, that I'll edit and hopefully get out tonight onto YouTube, uh, once I get it onto YouTube, I take it off this computer and, and just throw it onto the JBOD because un unless YouTube says, well, you're not, we're not going to let you have this show on anymore and we've erased it for you, so thanks, then... You know, I mean, it's there as a backup, but I'll typically, I won't go and look at it again. Yeah, I forgot. I, ha I have a Western Digital hard drive somewhere. So, uh, All right. A cloud drive. Yep. yep. Moving on to, <laughs> to the main stories. New York Subway, cheap at twice the price. The Apple Pay Express Transit feature, which ties into Apple Pay, is being activated even when not meant to be used through some of New York City's tap-and-go payment terminals for their subway systems, some customers with existing tap-to-pay Metro cards were surprised when they received notifications that their Apple Pay accounts were being charged, even though the devices were not intentionally used. The issue seems to be one of convenience in that th with this system, you don't have to unlock or even approve the transaction on your device to have it complete a transaction. The system is due to be extended to buses and other parts of New York's transit system in the near future. So, you know, this is turning out to be kind of a he said, she said situation with, you know, the New York City Transit Company kind of pointing the finger at Apple and Apple pointing back at New York City Transit. Um, Warren, you actually live relatively close to that area. I don't know if you've ever used the New York City tap and go system. I haven't used it uh, when, with uh, the Express Express Transit. Um, you know, in the phone settings under Wallet, there's an Express tr Express Transit card, and then you can pick your card, and then it says it, it will walk, work automatically without requiring author authentication to pay for transit. So basically, uh, you know, confusion out there was like, well, you know, it's supposed to ask for your Touch ID, or Face ID. The whole point is it doesn't. It's a it's a tap and go. Right. Uh, sort of like London has. Well, many uh, transactions. Uh, yeah, there. Well, they're, it's it's NFC enabled more than uh, anything else, and it's like, um, you know, it's tap and go like the Oyster cars in London, and uh, not these. Um, they had 
New York didn't have a tap and go system. They had a before this. They, they it's a it's a it's a pass that you put through the the subway machine and this you know, right RFID. Takes yeah, it takes the paper and throws it up. So it's a little bit different there. Um, yeah, no. Every time uh, I go to New York, uh, it, it, this is good because every time I go to New York, it's like a oh, crap. I didn't buy a ticket, or you know, it's probably you know for the people that were getting charged twice, it's probably uh, because they they used to just crawl under the turnstile, and now they're just uh, getting back. Uh, New York's getting back their money from them. <laughs> what do you think, Dave? Yeah, it just seems like it uh, just was a, just a big blunder, um, and uh, I'm not sure why that that should, that happened. Uh, very strange. Well, d- does Chicago have anything like this set up, or are they moving toward it? They haven't got anything yet. Um, you know, I I um, in fact, I I can give a, a firsthand uh, experience. I was using the, the Las Vegas monorail, and they have um, monorail. They have it. They have they have the same uh, s- similar system. You, you you go buy a ticket, you can buy it online, but they're not they're not a hundred percent yet. They don't they don't have they they take Google Pay but not Apple Pay. <laughs> so that's weird. Uh, um, which was kind of strange. But uh, Chicago has not done anything yet. No, they have uh, they have the transit cards you can buy. Um, and and RFID those. cards. Yeah. Uh, yes. The, the the card will just go right to RFID. They they have not gone to Apple Pay as of yet in the, in Chicago. Um, Okay, so they haven't gone. They haven't gone to any kind of of like in phone type of system yet, whether it's yeah. Android or Apple. Okay, no, well, no. it chances are it's it's uh, it's coming sooner rather than later, <laughs> especially for large mass transit systems. Um, yeah, Chicago uses a card like that. That's the Ventra, so, but it's a, but it's a credit card, so yeah, so it just fits in your wallet. Now, if you hold your wallet up to one of their terminals, does it does it work through the wallet, or do you have to pull it out? No, you got to pull it out. Okay. Well, actually, this, right. actually, no. This one doesn't have a strip, so this 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 has yeah this uh, this does, it has this to be RFID. A, it is RFID because it doesn't have a strip. So yeah. This they just I just got this one. This is new. All right. Next story: Apple services overtaking and surpassing many other parts of the company. This is a story actually directly from Apple. So I hadn't really thought about it that much but there is actually a lot of separate services that uh that apple has and i started to kind of look through it and it's like well let's see i've got that one and that one and that one so we're going to kind of just go through real real quick uh and we're they're in alphabetical order because that's the way they came up in the apple article so the first Mm -hmm. one is apple arcade do either one of you use apple arcade i do not i i did and i had the trial I tried. It. Yeah, I did. That's did actually the only one. one. Yeah, yeah that's I, the only one on the list I don't have right now. I have it, and I'm still paying for it, but I don't use it as much as I probably could. I think the biggest problem with Apple Arcade is also one of its strengths in that it there. You know, they basically say it doesn't matter what device you have; it'll work. So, Apple TV, your iPhone, your iPad, your Mac. Any of those, I think the only thing it doesn't work with is the HomePod and, and AirPods. You know, and that's that's coming next year once they get figure out a way to put a screen on AirPods. Can you imagine that just having AirPods that like wrapped around in the front of your yeah. face? Yeah, that would be weird. So we won't talk about that. So, uh, the the problem with Apple Arcade is you have to dumb the games down so that it will work with all of the different devices. You know, with the Mac obviously being the strongest and the Apple TV being the weakest, that's a huge gap yeah. as far as technology goes and as far as processing power goes. So it's not like you can just take a game, make it work on the Mac and have all these great graphics and then also move that to the Apple TV and expect a similar experience. And then also figure, unless you have... A, a Bluetooth arcade like controller. The only thing you have to play games with on an Apple TV is the little remote. And th- that's, that's a pretty poor way to, to interface with games. So, yeah, I, th- I think, you know, I also think, you know, I had to think of why it's not taken off as much. And, and I think it comes down to the violence on, um, you know, all the console games, 
the kids like to kill things and apple <laughs> and each other apps yeah. don't <laughs> and each other and apple apps uh apple games don't have that um to be honest with you and uh you know that's why you know you, you see all the the good games out there for xbox and ps4 or like you know red red dead redemption or whatever yeah. that one is and uh and the uh call of duties and all that stuff and and basically it's because you know it's it's fun to you know kill a bunch blow, of blow enemies stuff and up. zombies and stuff like that and, right. and apple doesn't have that in their store and, yeah. and you know i think that's the big the big issue right now well sadly. that's that's part of the reason why i set up a uh, boot camp on this imac when i moved to catalina because i couldn't play my zombie games <laughs> anymore through steam and steam wasn't going to update them the sons of bitches all right damn, zo- damn, damn them anyway damn them uh apple news apple news plus I am not subscribed to Apple News Plus, and I am not a big user of even the the regular part of it. Do either one of you use Apple News or Apple News Plus? I I was a subscriber, yeah. and then I sw- and I I canceled it. Uh, I just didn't see the need at this the value. Uh, yeah, ten dollars a month. I mean, it, yeah, it was nice to get those magazines and all, but uh, um, it's uh, yeah, I, I I just decided to just to step away for now um, okay it, i mean it doesn't have the wall street i mean it has some wall street journal content but you i don't have i you don't have the fallout we've talked about this before yeah um but uh i mean i still get the new apple news uh, emails uh, each day and, and yeah me too read the fr- you can still read the free stuff so it, it, it that's fine for me okay warren we we do have it um my wife uses it more than i do but for the Wall Street Journal, but um, you know, as far as the, like the news app, um, I use it at night. If you, uh, I think it's the free stuff uh, that you that you could see anyways. But uh, you know, there's a technology yeah. section that I go to every night, and I read through that. That there used to be an app uh, called Appy Appy Geek, I think it was called. Yeah, Appy Geek, and it was a kind of an aggregator of stories as well, and. Um, that stopped working right around the time that uh, the news app kind of came on. Uh, so I think there was something going on there, but you know, for me, I love, you know, I love reading the tech stories before I go to bed just to see what's going on for the day. And uh, yeah. that's what yeah. I use it for. Well, do either one of you ever go to MaxSurfer.com? Oh my God. That's an old site. <laughs> it's still there. And it's still, I can't believe it. Isn't... yeah, that, that, that's ancient. Oh, come on. You Now I'm getting like Facebook and YouTube errors and I'm not on YouTube. Why, why are you doing this to me? Mimo? YouTube. You missed okay. Apple TV. Yeah. Skipped right over it. Did I? Apple, Apple TV. TV. <clears throat> yeah, I have it. It's good. We like it. Um, what do you do? Have you watched everything that that's available on it? No, I watched two you know, shows. Yeah. I, I, I'm down, I think, two episodes on the morning show. I need to finish that one for season one, mostly just because I promised myself that I would give it a chance. And um, for all mankind, I thought started really strong, but the last couple episodes that I've watched of it, and I'm a couple episodes down on that too, Everybody have just been kind of like, kind of boring, you know? And uh, I haven't watched C, I haven't watched Snoopy in Space, um... I have the one show that I kind of was interested in watching. I still haven't, which is the Jeff Goldblum show. Um, that's that's Disney. There's only oh, is it? I thought that was on Apple TV. No. Okay. Not. Well, there there are other shows on Apple TV that that I just haven't gotten around to yet. And I think it's mostly servant. Servant, servant yeah. M. M. Night Shyamalan. So. Shyamalan yeah. Ding Dong. Ding dong. So um, I think the the biggest problem with Apple TV just seems to be that that unlike like Hulu or Netflix, that they, they don't have a huge back catalog of of content. So pretty much once you've watched everything that you're interested in watching on Apple TV, there's nothing else to see. You do you anticipate that ever changing? Yeah, but if you think about it, every other service like Hulu and Netflix and Amazon, mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it's not like it's not like you know I'm watching a hundred different types of things on either one of them. 
too. You find a few shows that you like on each one. I probably watch two or three shows on Amazon uh, that I like. I watch you know two or three shows on Netflix that I like. Um, so it's just, I mean, the only thing they don't have really is the back catalog of, of crap of movies and things like that. It's not necessarily um, crap. <laughs> well, me personally, I don't like. I, Where's I, the crap? I am not. Warren crap. wants to know where the crap is. It's a golden age of television. I don't need to watch. It movies. is. I've seen five. There's already. So there I mean, is so I, much very, new stuff being made. Yeah. I very rarely care about watching, you know, like the Disney Plus thing. Mm-hmm. I I have no desire to watch Star Wars again and again, or or, or Marvel movies again and again. If I'm laying on the couch and it comes on HBO, I'll you know I'll sit there and watch it, but I'm not going after it. Inertia. Um, so you know, who? Inertia. That's <laughs> basically basically it's like it's like I'm going to watch this because I can't reach the remote. <laughs> oh, <pretty> much, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's how I feel right now. But, oh, nah, yeah, no uh, okay. Uh, Apple Card. I, we all have Apple Cards. Yes. And it's of all the stuff that we've talked about so far, I think the Apple Card is probably the best thing that Apple's come out with in a very, very long time as far as services go. Uh, I, I love my Apple Card, I use it all the time. And yep. to be able to just see how much I spent and you know, make a payment if I want to, or, or defer it to some other time getting instant cash back. It's, 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 it really is a, an electronic credit card done right. I think in my opinion. No, I agree. It, it, and it's also scary too, because then you go back and look at your balance and and it's like, what the heck, what the heck, what did I I buy? Well, why, why did I get, why did I get 16 audio technica microphones? There must have been a reason. There must have been a reason. They don't, they don't get money off me though. I I I buy something and I'll pay it off. No, I mean I yeah. I'm, saying I'm, I'm saying I don't pay it off. So, it's just uh, you you go back. Yeah, no, no, back, but I mean. Buy. So for but they don't make money off me at all. They're giving me cash back, and I'm paying off the balance. Yeah, yeah. well, the the people that paid. you're buying stuff from are paying them. And they know, and and they yeah. know that there's going to be people like yeah. that. I mean that that's that's it's just part of the perk. Yeah. And they're getting you into whether or not you're buying other Apple stuff yet, they're getting you into the ecosystem. And speaking of ecosystem, the App Store. App Store. Uh, whether it's the iOS app. app Store or the Mac App Store. I subscribe to that. <laughs> well, I think you, I if, if you have a Mac or an iOS device, that's kind of a given. Um, I kind of feel like the iOS app store needs a Mac app just for discoverability. Since they took that out of iTunes, I have not gotten anywhere near the number of apps that I used to. What do you think, Dave? You're the, you're the iOS guy. So, so you're saying you want to, you want a Mac store? uh, No, not so much a Mac store for iOS but a portal for iOS apps in the, uh, on the Mac, because uh-huh. it's just, it just seems like it's easier to, to view. Yeah. Go but ahead. The, but what, what the, what the problem is, what, I mean, what, where is that going to link to? I mean, yeah, you it can give you a catalog. It goes right into iCloud. For... You know, all, all of your stuff mm-hmm. is being kept in iCloud. So as soon as Not you buy an, like buy an I, application. I yeah. Yeah. You you buy you buy a, an application in the iOS app store for on your phone and then the next time you go to your iPad there it is. So yeah, there's 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 a there's a break of links linking between iOS and macOS that that would have to happen in order for that sure. to work. So no, I I guess I could see that that being as an as a as an efficiency, but uh, I don't see Apple, Apple doing it. I mean, they're they're still maintaining separate because iOS they don't and, listen uh, to me. <laughs> they're 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 maintaining separate OSs, and I think they want to keep it that way. Probably when it comes to that. Yeah. What do you think, Warren? Yeah, you're talking about how iTunes used to have a like an App Store. 
um right yeah through iTunes. And, and then home. you were able to download okay. the apps so you could so you could store them right yeah at one point, I don't know if it's still there, but there was a special education version of iTunes that still had that available. Um, but you know, you would need something with a without Catalina on it to even try that. Um, the App Store. I mean, I don't sit there and browse. You know, look, look. It's for it's like anything else. I don't necessarily go in the App Store looking for something to to, to download. I hear about it somehow somewhere somebody tells me something about it or I hear something you know Dave and I are talking about it on the show and they're like oh it's a cool app and that's something I'll go and download it and it's easy enough to find it if somebody talks about it um you know once in a while if I'm super bored I'll go into the uh the you know the top 10 for inertia or page inertia strikes like again so, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll desperately <laughs> in pain lift my iPhone, my huge plus iPhone, and say, uh, I can't be to that. <laughs> yeah. Free. Who has time for free? So, you know, it's fine. Uh, for what I use it for, it's fine. I can't think of anything uh, that, that it doesn't do that it should do. Okay. Yeah. And good evening, Damon. Thank you for joining us tonight. Saw your comment there. Um, next one, wow. Apple Music. Do either one of you subscribe to Apple Music? Yes. Oh yeah. I I find Apple Music to be to be pretty awesome, especially when yep. you throw your own library, you know, that you own into it. Uh to get upgraded versions of, of some of the songs that I've, you know, ripped from CDs and all the rest of that in the past. Um I'm I'm very, very pleased with Apple Music and, you know, and I have Spotify and I've used Spotify and there's another one. I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head, but they have a comedy channel and, and a few other channels that, um, that I typically don't see with Apple Pandora. Music. Could be Pandora. Could be Pandora. One of them, ha but it, it's a comedy channel. It's got like, um, and it, it, most of the comedy bits that they're playing are ones from public domain. It's, you know, Bob Newhart and, you know, the old, old George Carlin, uh, Rodney Dangerfield, you know, the, the stuff that, that is 30 plus years ago. So it's, it's no longer really under copyright, but it, it's still, it's still great stuff. Uh, the last one is iCloud. Now, do either one of you have anything beyond the basic iCloud service? Yeah, I've got the two yeah. terabyte. Two terabyte. Yeah, for um, what is it? A hundred um, bucks a year. Yes. I think hundred bucks a I'm year, on, something like that. I'm, on, I'm doing the two hundred gig plan for a dollar. The two, two terabyte bucks. is uh, is ten dollars a month. Yeah. So ten dollars. Or, or no, well, yeah. I think you you get a slight discount if you if you do it on the yearly plan. But to be able right. to offload my entire iPhotos collection so that I don't have to yeah. keep it or photos collection. I should not, iPhoto has been dead for a few years. Yeah. Um, to have my, to have my entire photos collection off of this computer onto someplace else, uh, that alone, cause that, that's, I have like, and because I'm not a photographer, I, I don't have that much, but it's like into 300 to 400 gigabyte range, you know, pictures going back 20, 30 years that I've digitized. Uh, it's nice not to have to have all of that on this computer. And you know if if this computer gets stolen or blows up, that it's it's still there. So yeah, I, I sell it. I sell it to other people, you know, all the time. They they ask me if it's worth it, and it is. I pay oh, the it is. three dollars a month. For iCloud, Even, uh, and I have the twenty gig plan. Twenty gig plans is a very good deal. Yeah, Which of month, all of these services that you guys that I have listed here, do you think that Apple could bundle and what would you charge for it? And let's start with uh, Warren. Oh. <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, obviously you could bundle the arcade TV news, uh, music and iCloud. Uh, that's everything, <laughs> everything except the card. You can't, you can't do that. But, um, you know, I would, I would love to at least bundle, um, data. I, all obviously, all of them for a dollar a month. 
is what I would love to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. That's yeah, that'll Most work. content providers That's... would be real happy with that. Yeah, Apple would yes, do that one, in a heartbeat. a month for all of that for the, what was it, the two terabyte plan on the iCloud. We'll be good to go. Um, yeah, I use all of them except for Arcade at this point. So, yeah, put it together. Okay. Put I would, together I would say... And I would say uh, I think Apple TV Plus and music would be an, an interesting bundle. Um, and I can see they could charge. So what are they charging a month for Apple Music? Nine nine ninety nine. So you know, make it uh, unless a, you had the family plan, which takes it up uh, to fifteen fifteen dollars fourteen ninety nine, which I, which I have now. Um, yeah. You, well, you would could, you would you, you pay would you pay twenty five or thirty dollars a month for? Uh, Apple Arcade, TV Plus, uh, Apple Music, and and two terabytes of iCloud. Yeah, thirty, I, uh, 30, 30 a month. Maybe that's about, probably about what we're gonna about we're gonna pay when you when you just pay them, buy them separate. Yeah, sort of. Um, well, because yeah, you got music is ten at the the minimum. And if you five. have, yeah, and iCloud is ten. If you have two terabytes, ten to twelve. Right. Uh, Apple Arcade's TV five. is four or five, and um, five. Arcade is well. Yeah. Let's say twenty. Let's say twenty to twenty-five. I think would be a better target price for all of that. Yep. Sure. Yeah, I do that. I'm and, I'm pretty close to my uh, limit on iCloud, so that's the one complaint I have. If I had a complaint, it's either two hundred gigabytes or what's the next two one? Terabytes. Two terabytes. Yeah. yeah, that's that's <laughs> that's that, your choice. That's the problem. Yeah, that's the problem because uh, you know once you hit that two hundred gigabyte, it's uh, it's all in, and uh, they should have something in between. Okay, well then let's move on to Dave. Dave, Dave. who just came back from CES, tell us, Dave, how how did you find CES, and and don't say that you took a right turn at Albuquerque. I took a right turn at uh, the Wynn Hotel. Um, <laughs> well, it, uh, it was interesting. I mean, um, this is my first time, so it was a, a definitely a good experience. Um, I was able to get in under media, which I'm always very pleased about because, uh, I'm with, uh, you know, doing the, the podcast, uh, I twisted a few arms and they, they, they let me in as media. So, and we basically, we focus, you focus on three events. We have the, uh, the CES unveiled, which is the, uh, which is the event that CES puts on for the press uh, the first day. And then you have um, Pepcom, which is the second day, which is at another hotel. I was at the uh, Mirage um, and uh, we had about a hundred vendors there. And which is, which is kind of a nice experience because you, uh, you get to uh, spend time with these folks and not into the, at the big halls uh, with the, the regular show. Then you have Showstoppers, which is the third event, which, uh, uh, so you get a lot i got a lot of content and talking to a lot of people during those three events in itself the you know the 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 main show which is uh, starts on uh, tuesday and it actually goes until actually friday so it's still um still going on until tomorrow so uh but we left uh, wednesday so uh uh you know it's like 10 football fields <laughs> i mean it's just an enormous event lots of walking my feet are still killing me um but uh, <laughs> it's a great experience um um just to just to see the all kinds of different stuff and i'll stand out and i'll talk a few about a few things that 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 stood out to me um one of the th one of the things was of course we gotta start with microphones because the guy and you love microphones we did i do i, I, I do I, love I, microphones I, I how did, did you know that at, uh i don't know this is a strange thing uh the uh audio technica came out with a new 2100 uh x which is the the replacement for the uh, 2100 ATR 2100, which we all recommend as one of the starting mics, which I had started with. And, uh, you know, that, actually, oh, can oh, I, oh, can I interrupt for just a second now? Yeah. This, this microphone is USB C. Right. Is that USB C on the microphone or is it USB C into your computer or is it both? Both. So it's wow. now, a, it's a straight out USB C. It was the, I forgot which what the other mic I, I sent you. I have to look it up. On yeah, the, well, it on used to be micro C on the computer. Right now it's right. It was a micro C. Right now it's going to be an actual USB C. That's what on the, both the, sides. That's a, nice. Both sides. Yeah, the rep said that uh, that's that's the only difference. But 
the the style of the mic is different too. It actually kind of the twenty one hundred actually the new twenty one hundred X looks kind of like the the Shure SM fifty eight a little bit. Um, so it was uh, it was uh, it was most pleasant to see that they 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 looked at, and at the low end stuff. And then you right. look in their booth. You look in their booth. The high end. Their 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 headphones are just insane, and all the way up to their headphone amplifier, which was six thousand dollars. So, uh, yeah, which so, I don't think any of us is going to be getting. No, that's soon. all. That's all. That's all pro. That's all pro pro stuff. So, it's a couple weird things that that stood out, of course, and I'm sure everybody saw it in the press is that Charmin uh, uh, was there. Believe it or not, you have Charmin toilet paper there as as a, as a CES representative. Uh, they were, they well, were the robot that brings you out. Yeah, the robot, the robot that brings you. I need that. Uh, yeah, the robot toilet that brings paper. you your roll yeah. toilet paper because you ran out in your bathroom. I so, thought it was uh, going to be yeah, some kind of like automatic bidet or something. Yeah, no, um, they have that, and then they have uh, the smell thing you can put in the bathroom. It tells you. If they, yeah. It, it tells <laughs> yeah. You really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and then uh, the uh, other thing that kind of stood out with me is uh, the. Uh, Kohler came out with a, a shower head that has a built-in speaker uh, that's Bluetooth, and it, it just mounts into into the shower head itself. So you take a shower, all your sounds right there. You're immersed with it, and you also can get. There's two versions: a Bluetooth, and there's a Bluetooth with uh, uh, an Amazon Echo. So you can, you know, hey, hey lady, you can uh, now uh, order a Audio order Technica microphone. Audio Technica microphone, right? While you're taking a shower and thinking about it. So <laughs> the only more people the only, taking showers. Are people taking yeah. showers at the CES? Party? Yeah, yeah. Naked. It, don't, the only thing was it uh, it, it was kind of <laughs> strange. <laughs> it's strange you have to pull the thing out to charge it. So a lot of people. Are we were, still like, talking about the shower head? The shower head, yes. You okay. The, you, yes, yeah. I just the, wanted to make sure. Oh, geez. we were talking <laughs> about. You're trail. going down some dirt road there, man. Yeah. Uh, uh, so the speaker comes is removed from the shower head, and right. you have to plug it. You have to plug it in and charge. So it. that's how so, you charge it. Uh, I would think there'd be like some kind of like water wheel on the inside of it. So as you're taking your shower, the water is turning the wheel and and recharging the thing. It's, it would be like so green. Yeah, yeah. But no. So what else? The uh, uh, spec uh, for iPhone ca- uh, cases and actually yeah. any any case they came out with the the uh, Studio Two. Uh, it's an airbag style uh, protection uh, case. So what they basically did is, in fact, uh, Spec was nice enough to give me a free case. You know, I got one of these nice. free cases nice. here. So um, this, the edges of the case are, it, they've got like little air bubbles. They're kind of like uh, air pockets. Uh, it's it's kind of like a, like an airbag style type of case. So it's it reduces uh, it reduces the impact when when it's dropped. Um, so That's kind of that like was, what Autobox does too, isn't it? Uh, Except no, I think this, they've this, got this like is, great big impact zones. This is this is a new uh, this is a newer technology. So um, then uh, a company called MyCharge. I don't know if you're familiar with them. Uh, no. They're really they, yeah, they really. I, I have uh, I have one of their things. It's a wireless uh, battery pack kind of thing. Right, and it's got all all the plugs there for you. You and this one, it's the Hub Turbo ten thousand fifty, so it's a, a, a ten thousand fifty uh, milliamp uh, unit. It, it spouts out as it 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 charges about seventy five percent faster than um than and then your standard uh, uh, standard power brick. It's got a power outlet that's built right into it, so you just flip it down, it plugs right in to charge. So you don't have to have a cord to plug it in to charge it. Um, and then uh, it also um, uh, it also has pretty much any cable that you want uh, in there. Um, the other one that I also saw was uh, was from uh, Mophie, and if anybody's not familiar, Mophie Mophie uh, uh, was was bought by Zag, uh, which yeah. Uh, yeah. is not part of them. Mophie uh, is is was kind of it was expanding. Uh, the, the, I, I interviewed the rep, and uh, he. That they have a new thing called the Power Station Go. It'll charge your phone and jumpstart your car. <laughs> so nice. it's got it's a forty four thousand four hundred milliamp uh, Qi charging device that includes uh, sixty five watts of AC power uh, and two USB A charging ports and two little mini jumper cables that you can uh, you can use to to to, to jumper the uh, your car if needed. Um, yeah, I keep something like that, except I don't know if it has any USB ports, but I keep something like that in the car. And yeah, you, no, that, it, there, it just has two little, two little clips that come off that attach, attach right to the battery. 
And yeah, there was plenty nice, of those. Give you a nice jump if you need to. So, uh, and then I went to some, so we had a couple of the uh, industry meetings. Uh, one of them was, uh, and I didn't even know this this special interest group existed, the Bluetooth Sp- SIG or the Sp- Bluetooth Special Interest Group. Um, it was kind of an, it was okay event. Uh, what they announced uh, was uh, they announced a new technology for Bluetooth called LE Audio. And it's, LE stands for low energy. And what it's going to do, it's going to enhance uh, the audio performance and add support uh, for hearing aids. And it's, all, it's introducing uh, audio sharing. So they did a demonstration and actually showed you um, that, you know, how, it, how normal flow of audio is going to be in one direction back and forth. Uh, and now it's going to have two directions. So it's going to have one for each ear. And this is where the concept, and they went oh, through so some you, of the. You're able to split so, it in a stereo sort of way. Split it, split, split it in a stereo sort of way now, but yeah. the, what, the, what, but now it's going to be full out Bluetooth support for hearing aids because that, especially in that market, the hearing aids always was a challenge uh, to get to get you know, your iPhone and all the other devices working with hearing aids. That's that's a that's a game changer for those who are, who are hearing impaired. Um, but uh, the. Uh, the also is is the 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 fact of sharing audio is going to be easier than ever. Obviously, we know now we can do that with AirPods, uh, uh, right. but it's going to be even more enhanced uh, with this new technology um, that was announced uh, during that uh, session uh, as well. So, those are some of the you're, you're going to be you're going to be talking a lot more about this on your yes. podcast. I am on in touch with iOS. Uh, Warren and I will be digging in. I got. A lot of work to do <laughs> to get some notes together, and we'll get we'll definitely get some. Uh, they're definitely going to give you a review of some of the stuff that uh, I uh, I talked about. There was a uh, uh, I know uh, Warren drooled over it. He wanted the the, uh, the drone that now can can be out in the rain because you you weren't able to get uh, the, rain the drone was yeah, it was really it. kind of cool. It was in this booth, and there's this big long bar of rain pouring onto this drone and the drone and right. I, at first i walk up to the booth i'm like what the heck is this it's crazy <laughs> but and, and and so but the, i i posted it on my instagram page um and the drone just kept going like this and the water's just just pouring onto it because i you know i'm not a drone guy so i didn't know i guess yeah you, you can't use a drone while it's out raining because it'll just it'll just crash yeah. and burn um, or, or, is that just, because of the weight of the water, or it interferes with the signal, or some combination the thereof? The electronics. There's, there's so now it's protected. Yeah. yeah, it's protected. Wait, are you yeah. telling me that electronics and water doesn't mix? No. Um, see, see, guy, this is why. See all uh, the parts in my drone. This is why your drone didn't <laughs> work, guy. <laughs> Throwing up the. I Take washed it very anything. carefully before I used it, so I don't know what was the problem. <laughs> and then uh, one more, one more I'll mention, uh, which I thought was really cool. It's called the uh, Air Selfie, and it's about the size of the palm of your hand. It's a, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a little miniature drone. It's got a built-in camera into it um, okay. that uh, you, you hold Ooh. it up in your hands like this, and it just goes, zzz, and it, it, it's controlled by your hands. So you're going like this. Yeah. The guy was going like this, and it moves wherever you move. And well, how you an do you know what it's taking a picture of? Well, or does it, it center it, on your head or the people that you're with? It's on the people that you're with. I mean, it just okay. shows and, and it actually moves around, and you you can position it. You you know where the camera is because the camera is going to be facing that direction, where it can be just they, moved just by. They're it. Actually, they have a few of those out already. Uh, yeah, this was a new this was a newer company that. Uh, uh, that uh, that came out, but all all in all, the the event was great. I mean, they had. I mean, there there is a there is a area called Eureka Park, and what that is, those are all the startups. I pop, yeah. I popped in there and take a look at that, and that's really interesting to see some of the uh, the startups that uh, that was out there. Um, Smart. Did home you see this the, comment from uh, from Damon he, asking if you no, saw I, the reverse microwave drinks cooler? I did not see that. No. <laughs> No, I don't. I didn't see yeah, the comments. But that sounds good. Um, There's but, a, uh, what about the what about the the porn area, the sex no, area? No, no, okay, that's okay. that's uh, that's not there because uh, uh, because that the, was down at the shows. Bunny Ranch. The adult show is not no, until said, two weeks later. No, no, not the adult show. They're supposedly in CES. Yeah. They allowed. They new, did. Like, I the didn't whole, see it. Yeah. No, it was. Hidden. Well, you say that. But, I have to say, but they were giving. It's impossible to see everything. <laughs> I did not see it. Trust me. Um, yeah, they were, uh, somebody was talking about it. It's impossible like, to see everything. It really is. 
there's specific okay. rules on what can be there. Yeah, I, I won't go into that. Anyway, those. it was it was or, a great event. It, it was it was a, it's a it's a great show. I'm mm -hmm. I'm definitely hooked. I'm ready to go next year and had a lot of well, maybe, a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun hanging out with uh, Dave Hamilton, Chuck Joyner, yeah. Allison Sheridan. They all were were just very gracious to, to their time. I got to meet uh, Leo Laporte again. I know I knew Leo from before and uh, saw Tom Merritt, saw uh, Shannon Morris. That's a lot, a lot of. So you see all these celebrity podcasters. They're out there. Uh, it was. What it was about me? But you weren't there. So I don't oh, that's I would have said there. Uh, but uh, but see, it, interesting to see all the media, and that's and that's the other thing too about going to these media events. It's media only, so you, it it focuses away from uh, the 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 rest of the attendees. So. Uh, but uh, great show! It's like the, I said, the hoi polloi. Make sure you have your, your your some great shoes on because you are going to be walking lots of places to to, to, to do it. So it reminds me of the old uh, Mac World Expo. Yeah, yeah. I would this... love to. Uh, you know, I'm going to. I, no, I, I need to look into this to see you're if in the industry. It, it would you be go. possible for me to. Well, it, it's you know because I've actually never actually been to Las Vegas. Other oh than God. like stopping what? in the airport on my way to someplace else, That's I've never crazy. been to Vegas. Crazy, crazy. That doesn't never. make sense. It's fun. Well, I think twenty twenty one because I, I think uh, Warren, you and I are representing in touch with iOS. We're we're doing it. Yeah, I, I gotta keep. You can be uh, the terrible the trio. What's that? I keep whispering in my wife's ear at night. Yeah. <laughs> yes. My we'll my wife would be like, "Oh, you want show. you want it's you want to leave show. for a week? Go." Go! I'm happy to see, <laughs> happy to see the tail end of you for a week. It's for the show. It's for the it's show. For... <laughs> my wife, I don't think she what? trusts me uh, alone in Vegas. To be honest with you, I don't think I trust myself alone in Vegas. To be honest with you, I did not. I did not spend. No, you'd be with us, so any, you know you'd be totally trustworthy. I did not gamble really? one time, so no, not one. See, I would. I would. I would uh, gamble a little uh, bit. I um, love it's a it. Is fun as long as you know. It, the, the whole thing about gambling is you have to go in with the expectation that you're going to lose every single bit of the money that, that you planned on gambling with. <laughs> and true. when you've lost that money, you push away from the table and you walk away. You don't sit there and say, well, yeah. this, 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 next, this next hit, that, that'll do it. That Because no, it's not going to do theory, it. In theory. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. But it won't. Uh, real well, quick, yeah. let's start Let's start yeah. with Dave. Uh, Dave, if people wanted to get a hold of you, what would they have to do? They go to intouchwithios.com, check out our our podcast. Um, the last episode was with um, Rosemary Orchard and talked about shortcuts. So check out that last episode. Warren and I will be back on up on the uh, back uh, on next week after the long holiday as well. So uh, stay tuned and uh, listen to uh, for some great CES coverage. Um, and then uh, I'm on the Twitter at Dave G65, also president of the Suburban Chicago Apple Users uh, Apple User Group. Warren, you can find me in Guatemala or, or yeah, Iraq. I need to change it. Do I have to change this again, Warren? Do I have to change this uh, again? Yeah, I shall be in Iraq this time. I changed or Iran. Yeah, I don't know if I want to be there right now. I don't know what be there, please. No, yeah. Um, in touch with iOS sounds good. Mac to the future uh, Facebook group is good. Um, you know, Yardley, Pennsylvania, if you're in the area, come say hi. And if you would like to get in touch with me, my email address is guy at my Mac.com. I can be found on the Twitters at Mac parrot or vert shark. Besides this wonderful Mac, to the future podcast, I also do the, my Mac podcast nearly every single weekend. Uh, it's been a couple of weeks because because Gaz and I have been have been busy with various holiday shenanigans. Uh, hopefully, we'll be getting together on Saturday or Sunday this weekend. We're coming up on our five hundredth episode, and we will be I will be giving away. I'll show them to you right here. Be giving away these four twenty five dollar gift certificate cards for insulting us, and we appreciate the fact that you take the time. To insult Gaz and I on the MyMac.com podcast. There is also sort of Guy's Daily Drive. I finally have a new episode out after, um, God, the last one I put out prior to this was October 29th. So it's it's another dentist episode. I've recorded it on my way to the dentist to get some teeth drilled and filled. And um trying to think. I think that's that's about it. You can, Oh, you can 
If you'd like to help support the things that I do, uh, you can buy me a coffee at coffee.com, ko-fi forward slash Mac Parrot. You can do that Patreon oh. thing, patreon.com forward slash Mac Parrot. And there's also the PayPal thing, paypal.me forward slash Mac Parrot. <laughs> and I think that is going to do it for the evening. Uh, thank you, Warren. Thank you, Dave, for coming on. I'm I'm jealous, but glad you had a great time out in Vegas, Dave. Hopefully uh, you. next year you can be joined by uh, by either Warren or myself or both of us. That would be good, too. Oh, that would be even better. Back to the future. Go 2021 <laughs> Vegas style. Live. Vegas, Vegas, baby. Vegas, baby. And that is going to do it for the evening. Uh, thank you all for downloading and or listening to the Mac to the Future Go live cast. We really, really do appreciate the fact that you have taken the time to do so. Say goodnight, Warren. Say goodnight, Dave. Good night, Dave. Good night, Dave. Good night, Warren. <laughs> Good night, guy. Hi. Good night.